how to overcome artist block. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle, and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour, a little bit of mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell notification, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. Now, usually on this channel, I'm teaching you how to paint, but that's all very well if you can paint. I'm seeing a lot of people recently, particularly on Facebook groups, in my own Facebook group and on other Facebook groups on the internet and in art forms, say that they just can't get started. There's a real problem at the moment, it seems to me, with artist block. I don't know if it's because more people are at home, more people have taken up painting, or perhaps some people have been unwell and they're having a bit of a break and trying to get back into their painting. So being unable to paint is a really, really strong problem for a lot of amateur artists. Now, of course, professionals can get hit by artist block too, but it's less likely to happen to us. And that's because we often have deadlines and we've often been paid for work up front. We almost don't have the luxury of being able to sort of stop and think about emotions. We just have to get on with the work but that's no help to you if you're suffering from artist block. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to give you some solutions that have worked for me in the past and also that work for my students. Now, when I first started painting myself, I was a single parent. And the only time I really had available to me to paint was in the evenings. Now, feeling sleepy wasn't an issue because I'm hyperactive, I never sleep, I literally never sleep but um, the light levels were a problem and I kept buying things. I'd buy sort of daylight lamps and special bulbs and things and try and sort out the light levels. I couldn't get the hang of it. In the end, I just said to myself, well, do you know what? I can't paint after the natural light has gone. That's just the way I am. Well, fast forward a few years, I became a professional and I started planning my first solo exhibition. And three weeks to go, of course, I'm always last minute because I'm always taking on too much stuff. Three weeks to go, I didn't have enough work. Well, do you know what? An amazing thing happened. Suddenly, I could paint at 2 a.m. with very, very poor light conditions. So there's an ideal of uh, perfectionism that we all try and live to. You know, I can't paint unless this is in place and I can't paint unless that is in place. So in this video, I'm going to give you lots and lots of solutions that are going to get you not only out of that sort of psychological headspace, but also give you some practical solutions that you can implement to get yourself painting again, because that's why we're here to do more painting. So let's talk now about some practical ways of overcoming that artist block. And the first one I have for you is to return to your favorite subjects. Now, I know what it's like. You end up painting the same thing over and over again. You just want to do something different. You know, if you find that you're always painting flowers or you're always painting cats or dogs or houses or whatever it is that you tend to go back to time and time again, you want to move away from that. You want to find something new. But what can happen is you can kind of get in this sort of cycle of being stuck and not knowing what to paint and then just end up painting nothing at all. So just to get yourself moving again, just to get yourself started again, Think about your favorite subject. Think about the thing that you have found easiest to paint, even if you're bored with it, even if you feel like you've painted it too much. If it's the thing that's gonna get you painting again, then just go back to your favorite subject, go back to that comfort zone and just pick up your brushes. Now, I talked in the beginning of this video about how artist block can be more of a problem for amateur artists than professionals. And that's because we normally have deadlines. We have people expecting our work to be ready at a certain time. Now, you can implement this in your own life, even if you are not a professional artist. I want you to give yourself a commission. Now, I bet there is somebody in your surrounding friends and family or perhaps somebody you know that would appreciate either a painting or a handmade card. And I want you to commission yourself. So perhaps you know somebody that's expecting a baby. What could you make them with a painting on that they would really, really appreciate? Maybe a friend of yours is about to hit retirement or about to go on a journey. I want you to think really carefully about somebody that you know who would appreciate either a handmade card or a painting or some other little craft item that you can incorporate your work into and I want you to commission yourself. I want you to tell yourself what you're going to make for that person and when it needs to be ready because it's not just financial and time pressure that gets us moving, it's having an end goal. So by having an actual end goal, you'll be more likely to make the painting and the best thing is you won't have trouble deciding what to paint because you already know what your friend, what your family member would enjoy. So ask yourself, what's their favorite thing? What's their hobby? What's their stage of life? What's happening to them next? 
What could you make that they would really, really appreciate? Even if you have to have two or three goes at it, just keep going until it's done. So I want you to give yourself that commission. It's not a paid commission, but it has an end date, it has a goal, and it has a subject that will suit the commission best. So give yourself a commission, find somebody in your surrounding friends, family, or acquaintances that you can make something really nice for, they will appreciate it so much and it will give you a sense of purpose and a reason to pick up your paintbrush. So let me talk now to those of you who have become disheartened with your work recently and perhaps you think that your work used to be better a few years ago and it's not very good anymore or perhaps you've just had a few bad paintings in a row and it's put you off continuing. Well I want to explain to you that progression is not a straight line from A to B. You don't just go up in a nice smooth slope like this. You go up, you do well and then you do worse and then you go up and then you go down and then you go up. It's not a straight line. You will have times when you are painting badly and you just have to push through those times and just accept that this is what happens. I remember when my daughter was little and I taught her how to tie her shoelaces. I was really pleased and she was pleased that she could do it and I thought well that's that done, thank goodness I don't have to do that again. Taught her how to tie her shoelaces, put a tick in the parenting box, job done. But shortly after that there came a time where for some reason she just had slip-ons and velcro shoes for about six months. And then I got her some more lace-ups so I give her the lace-up shoes and she looks at the laces, you've got the laces like this and she's looking at me like what is this strange and unusual thing that I have never seen before in my life? And I thought, really? We're here again? I have to teach you again how to tie your shoelaces? It had just gone, she'd forgotten. It's exactly the same with learning anything in life, especially artwork. It is not a progression from being bad at painting to being super at painting with no ups and downs in the middle. So pull out some of your old work, pull out some of the things that you were excited about and pleased with. It can be really difficult, can't it? You look at that old work, I've done paintings in the past that I've really, really been happy with and thought they were really good. And I look at them sometimes and think, I don't even know how I did that so well. I don't even know that I can do that again. And that's the thing with artistic endeavours. Because you do something once doesn't mean necessarily you can replicate it the next time. Because you write a best-selling novel doesn't necessarily mean that your second novel will be any good. That's why these things are so tough. However, you will increase in consistency with practice. So the more you practice, the more likely you are to produce good work and the more consistency you'll get in producing that work as well. So if you've had a few pieces of work that just haven't gone very well, you know, it happens. It happens to all of us, even professional artists. Sometimes we learn to tie the shoelaces and then sometimes we forget how to tie the shoelaces. So don't let a few bad pieces of work put you off starting again. Just get started. Just do something. See how it goes. If it's no good, move on. Do the next one because there's nothing that's going to get you to your goal other than practice. And if you're going through a bad time with your painting, just keep going. Trust me, it will not last forever. At this point, if you're finding this video useful and getting some value from it, can I just ask you please to click the like button, to click that thumbs up. YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction, so if you click like, subscribe, share, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people and my channel will continue to grow. I'm so grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. So let's talk now about those of you who have stopped painting because you are comparing yourself to others. More specifically, you're comparing the speed of your learning and the speed of your improvement, the speed of your artistic improvement to other people. This is so unhelpful and it's not going to help you get any better at painting. The only thing that will do that is study and practice. Now, in my spare time, and I use the word spare time advisedly, I practice Tai Chi. I go to a club and I practice Tai Chi and Kung Fu. And there's a proverb that our instructors have placed on the website and sometimes it's on our Facebook group too, to remind us to focus on ourselves. And the proverb is, the journey is the reward. And this particularly applies to something that takes a long while to learn and something where you never completely master the techniques. And it was for a long time on the header of our Tai Chi Facebook group. So what does it mean? It means that the practice of Tai Chi, taking part in a Tai Chi class and practicing your Tai Chi is the reward. It's what gives you the benefit. The reward is not in getting to an end goal, is not in learning a form. It doesn't matter if I spend an entire class learning one step and the person next to me has learned a whole routine. It doesn't matter because the Tai Chi has benefited both of us equally. So I want you to get away from the idea that the only thing that matters is the end result of your painting. 
The process of painting itself matters too. The relaxation, the enjoyment, the playing with the colours and the playing with the paint. That is so important to your mental health and to your well-being and to your enjoyment. It's not all about the end result. The journey is the reward. And if you still are very focused on the end result and focused on getting better, think about this. Natural talent will not get you anywhere near as far as just simple persistence and practice and learning. Now, as well as Tai Chi, I attend Kung Fu classes. I am the highest grade in my club who is not an instructor. In fact, I'm training now to be a junior instructor. So I've been doing Kung Fu for about eight or nine years. Now, unlike art, it did not come naturally to me and I am not naturally built for it. I didn't start training until I was 45. I'm only five foot three. I'm very, very small boned. Things break easily and my knees are not in the best condition. In fact, over the years, we have had so many people come along to our Kung Fu club who just knock me out of the park. They are so much better than me. They may have done yoga previously or other martial arts. They can kick higher than me. I kick pretty high actually, but they can kick higher than me. They are more flexible than me. They are younger than me. They are physically fitter than me. Now, let me tell you, none of those people are in our club anymore. They just wandered off. They did it for a while. They got bored or they found something else to do. So who is left being the highest grade in the club who is not an instructor? It's me. And I was one of the ones with the least amount of talent for martial arts. So what I am saying, and this has been borne out many, many times in the fields of sports and arts and business, is that sheer persistence, sheer studying, sheer concentration, and just never giving up will get you further than talent ever will. So how have I managed to reach the level I'm at in martial arts training when there were so many more people who had so many more natural advantages and so much more talent than me? The truth is I just never gave up. I go to every single lesson and I always have. I help out at the kids classes, I study the syllabus, I try and learn the Chinese terms and more importantly I turn up for training. I turn up when it's dark and cold and sleeting out and I have to get in my car and drive and it's freezing. I turn up when I'm tired, I turn up when I've got a headache, I turn up when I've been teaching art all day and I've just got home and I haven't even had time to have a meal. I just turn up unless I'm seriously ill and I even turned up when I was having radiotherapy for cancer treatment. I just turned up at the club and I just kept learning and I just kept training. Turning up for your art and just keeping painting and just keeping practicing and trying to learn as much as you can will get you so much further ahead than anybody with natural talent who just can't really be bothered. Slow and steady wins the race. I've given you one proverb already, but remember the tortoise and the hare as well. So another thing that can make it easy to start painting again is to have a plan. And I don't mean just a plan for the painting. And I will actually be doing a video coming up on this channel where I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step plan for completing a watercolour painting. You're going to find it really, really useful. I'm going to go through one of my own paintings and tell you how I plan each stage and execute each stage. So that's going to be really useful for you. So don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. But I'm also talking about the plan for before you start painting. What do you need to put in place to get a painting started? Because if you can take yourself through some simple steps that aren't actually painting, that are just getting ready for painting, then it'll be easier to get started. So I want you to write down everything that you need to do before you start a painting. Do you perhaps have to set up a table? Do you have to get some newspaper put down? Do you have to fill up your water jars? What about setting out your paintbrushes? What about finding your subjects? What about preparing your paper? I want you to actually make a list of all of those things. Now, none of those things are actually painting, but what you'll find is that if you can just make yourself go through those basic steps, and when you get to a point where you think to yourself, I just can't paint anything, I don't know what to paint, I don't know how to start, get that list of steps out and just start with the steps. Start with putting the newspaper on the table. Start with filling up the jam jars with water. Trust me, if you can get those initial steps done, you'll be a long, long way towards starting to paint. Make sure you include things like finding a subject. And if you find that that's the point where you get stuck, you can never find a subject, then just give yourself some kind of random way of selecting. For example, type the word purple into Google and see which images come up and tell yourself that you'll paint the first good image that comes up. Write down a list of your favorite subjects, cut them up, put them into a bag, just like a raffle and pull one out. There are lots of things you can do to artificially help you to choose a subject. Either that or ask someone else. 
say to yourself, I'm gonna ask my sister what I should paint, and whatever she says, I'm just going to do it. Or use some of the other tips in this video, like commissioning yourself. But start with that list of things that you need to do before you start painting. Actually write down those physical steps. It might be a tiny, tiny thing like getting out your roll of paintbrushes and unwrapping them so they're ready on the table. But trust me, if you can go through those basic steps where you set everything out, you'll be much, much more likely to pick up your paintbrush at the end of it. Do let me know in the comments which of these tips you found most helpful and of course do feel free to share your own tips so we can all learn together. Now if you enjoyed this video I have another video that I made a little while ago that's all about the things that professional artists do that amateur artists don't. I think you're going to find it really really insightful and interesting. You can watch that video right now.